Hello there, and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low-budget science channel. Do not click like. Do not click subscribe. Uh, you should be aware that I am in a bit of a state today because I only got about four hours of sleep, thanks to my friend and yours, Insomnia. Today, we're going to look at uh, Slope Uncertainty and Logger Pro. And I'm going to do my data manipulation in Excel because this process is cumbersome in Logger Pro and also because uh, Logger Pro can be a bit buggy occasionally. So uh, your data manipulation is probably just going to go more smoothly in Excel. You can do it in Logger Pro, however. Uh, so here I have my independent variable. I have, less, I have left this generic, um, so it could be anything. Uh, and here is my dependent variable, and this is a nice format for a table, guys, uh, if you're interested. So uh, I need to average my first manipulation of my independent variable. So I'm going to do that by hitting the equal sign and the average function, and then I just select my five trials, okay? And just drag it across, hit enter. There's my average. This little error sign pops up, but uh, don't worry about it. It's not important. Okay, here is the beauty, of course, of using Excel for calculations as opposed to a calculator. I just drag this corner down, and there are my averages for all of my trials. Nice, quick data manipulation just by dragging the corner. Uh, you could also just uh, copy and paste. Same result. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, procedural uncertainty because this is going to give me the size of my custom error bars in uh, Logger Pro, as you will see momentarily. So again, I need another formula. And if you've been following my channel, you've probably seen me do this a few times. So it's going to be an equal sign. Here I need uh, two parentheses like this. Inside my parentheses, I will put max. And this is going to give me another function. And inside my max parentheses, I select, again, my five trials. Oops. One more time. My five trials. Hit enter. That's going to give me an error. It's fine. Don't worry about it. OK, uh, now we need to modify this. Uh, we need to click right between these two uh, right parentheses. And we're going to add a minus sign. And then min, we're going to use the min function, select our trials again, hit enter. It's going to correct my formula again. And we will now have this result. Okay, So max value minus min value, all in parentheses. We're now going to click outside the parentheses and hit backslash two, and this, of course, is the formula for procedural uncertainty. And when I hit enter, there it is. So my maximum value in my five trials minus my minimum value in the same five trials divided by two. There's your procedural uncertainty. Done. Okay, I'm now going to take this and copy and paste. And there you go. And now you have custom error for each trial, for each average. OK? Uh, note that your average now should have the same number of decimal places as your procedural uncertainty. So my procedural uncertainty has two decimal places for each, uh, for each manipulation of the independent variable. And my averages also have two decimal places. OK? So uh, if you need to modify that, just go ahead and click these little guys up here, and you can add or remove decimal places as needed, OK, with these two buttons. All right, so now we have everything we need to set up uh, Logger Pro with custom error bars. So I'm going to uh, select my independent variable data, and I'm going to copy it. So select and copy. And then we will go straight over Logger Pro 
and let me put my desktop somewhere more appropriate. There we go. Uh, and you just click on the X column here and paste. Uh, didn't like that. One more time. So copy and paste. Okay, there we go. So that is my X column. My Y column, repeat the process, right click, copy, slide over to Y, click on the column, oops, click on the column, right click, and paste. Okay, there we go. Uh, and there's my data set right there. Those are all of my data points. Okay, so now from this point, uh, we would generally want to set up our axes. So uh, the name for my x-axis will be my independent variable. So whatever that is, I'm just gonna enter independent variable. And then uh, make sure you also add the unit. Um, so if it's meters, you would add an M. Oh, there's a the bell, I need to hurry. If it's kilometers, you would do that. If it's grams, you would do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, note that you can also get Greek characters here and subscripts and superscripts. So uh, very useful. You can get nice units and uh, the graphs from Logger Pro are going to be a bit nicer than the graphs from Excel. Okay, uh, I will just call my unit IV just have something there because you should always have a unit. Okay, um, then we go over to options. And here, we need some error bar calculations. So uh, normally, in, we would know the error of our independent variable. But because I'm using a generic unit, um, that's a little bit tricky. This may or may not be constant. It depends on how you measured the independent variable. Uh, but let's assume here that it's going to be constant, and it's going to be uh, maybe the smallest possible unit here. So we'll say uh, 0 0.0, we'll say 0 0.1. So error bar calculation is going to be constant, uh, 0 0.1. There we go. And uh, I'm going to now auto scale, and that's going to make my data points a little bit bigger. So to auto scale, you just push this button. Woo, there it is. Um, these are actually a bit large, larger than is ideal, so uh, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller just for the sake of this video. So let's go uh, 0 0.01. Uh, you should put in your actual value. Okay, there you go, 0 0.01. Nice. Okay, uh, next we're going to add a custom error bar set for the y-axis here. And the way that we're going to do that is by going to data and go new manual column, okay? So uh, we will call this uh, uncertainty. And there you go. Uh, also, I haven't added a, a unit for Y yet, so I'm gonna change that now. My Y unit will be, um, sorry, my Y label will be dependent variable whatever that may be. And again, the units uh, should be appropriate. I'll just say DV, because you always want units. OK, uh, we'll come back to that in a second. All right, now I need to go and fetch my uncertainty for column C here. And this is the uncertainty of my averages, so my procedural uncertainty. So go ahead and copy that, and then paste it into your new manual column. OK, so we're going to go paste. Right, now we're going to go back to the Y column and we go to options and we're going to add error bar calculations. Here, we're going to use a column and this is going to give me custom error bars which will look cool and will make you feel cool and will get you a better grade. Okay, so there. Uh, we're going to use the uncertainty column as I've defined it before. When we click done, we'll get these nice guys, okay? And you can see my vertical bars are now different lengths. My horizontal bars, 
custom. Uh, sorry, standard, standard. Okay, uh, next we need to add our trend line. So what I'm going to do is click this, this box here, and this is going to give me a linear fit. There it is, very straightforward. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is add a manually fitted line because remember, we're looking here for slope uncertainty. So, I'm going to have to pause the video and come back because I need to fetch my daughter. And that means I have to do editing, which I don't like, but anyway, there it is. Uh, so I will pause the video and come back to it. Okay, I'm back and I've uh, changed scenery. So as I was saying, we need to insert now some manually fitted lines. And the way that we do that is by clicking this guy here, the curve fit button. So you click curve fit and you have a whole bunch of choices. We're not actually fitting a curve, we're fitting a line. So go ahead and click linear fit here under general equations. And uh, then you will tap manual right here. And uh, before we do that, we, uh, no, nah. now let's, uh, before we do that, go ahead and try fit. Okay, this is gonna put a line in for you ahead of time. After you try the fit, go ahead and click manual. Okay, then you're going to hit okay. And this is going to produce a new line on top of the old line, which is not what we want. So what you will do is uh, right click on this manual fit box and you will click linear fit options. Okay, uh, so what we want to do here is hit enable line drag and that's this little guy down here. And once we've done that, we can now change our slope. So you see these, uh, these little diamond shapes come up, right? So what you'll do is you'll grab one of those diamond shapes and just drag it. And what you want to do is drag it to the outer limits of your uh, most extreme error bars, okay? So we're kind of looking for a best fit line for uh, the most steep, or in this case, the most, uh, the most shallow slope. So you're going to end up with something like this. Okay. All right. So there's my first manual fit line. So now we repeat that process, exactly the same process. We go curved fit. Uh, again, we have a linear fit. Again, click try fit, and it's going to drop a line of best fit right over your automatic fit. You will then click manual and hit OK. Okay, so here's our next manual fit line. And from here, we again right click and type uh, tap linear fit options. And once again, enable line drag, okay? And now uh, we're looking for the steepest possible slope that could fit in this data set. And note that uh, since this is a manual fit, it's a bit of an imprecise art. Um, don't get too worried about it. Basically, you're just looking for a reasonable maximum and a reasonable minimum for your particular data set. Um, note that in this data set, it actually looks a little bit like we have some curvature. And uh, if that happens, you may, well, you will want to explain why you might have curvature here. And if you're not supposed to have curvature, uh, you'll want to linearize your data, which is perhaps a separate video, but usually just involves uh, squaring one of your axes either your X or Y axis, and then you'll get a linear fit, uh, assuming you have a, a exponential relationship. Okay, um, so now we have our linear fit, and this would be the average slope, okay? So if you're reporting your data, here's your average. And for your manual fit lines, what you'll do is you'll take your maximum slope, 
which would be this value here. You will subtract from your maximum slope your minimum slope here, as we see here, and you will divide that value by two for your slope uncertainty. As we saw earlier in the video, uh, when we calculated, sorry, when we calculated procedural uncertainty, it's exactly the same formula, okay? So maximum value minus minimum value divided by two. You do exactly the same thing with your slope and you will have your slope uncertainty, okay? So this would be probably one of the final steps in your data analysis on your IA, okay? So you'd be looking at your last, your last bit of data after some processing frequently. Okay, guys, that does it for this video. Uh, I'm Mr. Van Lowe. This is my poorly monetized low-budget science channel. Once again, do not click like and do not subscribe. But do have a great day.